Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. We've covered all the characters that appear in patch 2.4 and we even touched on the characters that are more to appear in patch 2.5 down the road. With these new characters on the scene, you must be wondering what they can do in terms of endgame content. Will these new characters make the current meta champions even stronger or are they still outmatched? In this video, we will discuss the tier list of Honkai Star Rail characters together. Since we've already talked about Veishao, Lingxia, Moza, and the March 7th, we will try to include them in the list. So without further ado, let's get into it. Do you have a character or weapon in the game that you really want but you don't have enough stellar jades? Here is a smarter way to recharge your favorite games like Genshin Impact and Honkai Star Rail. Look no further than Loot Bar. Loot Bar is the most reliable top-up platform, saving 20% for all orders compared with the official channel, and an extra 5% off for your first purchase. It's 100% safe as you will only be using your UID. We will buy a pack for 3000 stellar jades for $42 which otherwise would have cost $50. Is having $7.5. We received the crystals we purchased in less than 3 minutes. All recharge will be done through the official channel with Mihoyo, which allows you to enjoy all top up offers. Ready to level up your gaming experience? Check the link in the description to get the amazing discount. I just wanted to give you a heads up. In Honkai Star Rail, team building is the key. Your character's ability to get through in-game content depends on whether or not your team is solid. So just because the character that usually carries your account isn't on the list doesn't mean that the characters isn't good. The data for this tier list comes from the Pride Rando GD, and I've added my own thoughts on how well each character in MOC, Pure Fiction, and Apocalyptic Shadow can do, even without the bonuses from the end-game content. As the character's mechanics change, this tier list will change too. When it comes to MOC, Akron is still the top damage dealer character, followed by Firefly, Runmei, and Aventurate, who also rank highly as DPS specialists, buffer weakness break, and sustain. I'd also like to congratulate Gallagher, the only 4-star character to make this top tier list. Gallagher is a worthy member of this elite group, as he is the best sustained character that Firefly's time super break can have. But wait a minute, you can't have forgotten about Lingxia, right? It looks like this new healer character is going to give Gallagher a run for his money in this class. In yesterday's video, we talked about Lingxia's abilities and it's clear that she has a strong healing kit. Lingxia can do more than just heal. She can also give the team another buff break effect, and her offense is pretty good too. I think a lot of players will probably put her on the Firefly team with her cute bunny, which will shift Gallagher's position in this class. I think Veisho will enter this top tier too, because we have also seen her overpowered kit, like Akron. Veisho might even be considered an Akron single target, given the strength of the follow-up attack kit and the toughness reduction. It seems likely that Feishou will have no difficulties during this MOC. But can Feishou unseat the real Akron, or at least match Akron's performance? We will have to wait until the release to find out. What are your thoughts guys? Do you think Feishou will match Akron? Please leave your opinion in the comments down below. Next, I think Jiao Chu falls somewhere between the Apex class and the Meta class. The reason is that Jiao Chu's actual kit is effective. He can easily apply Ashen Rose debuffs to enemies and has a large coverage area. As an ILD character with a damage over time support role, there are already several predecessors who have the same debuff and have been well built by players. This makes Jiao Chu's inclusion on the team less essential. It's also possible that Jiao Chu will prove himself to be a valuable addition to the team as a high-end character. It looks like Yunli and March 7th will have to settle for second place. I don't think their kits are bad, they are actually pretty good. Each of them has its own set of challenges. For instance, Yunli her trademark LC to get the most out of her performance. Yunli's LC gives her a better chance of being attacked by the enemy. If Yunli is attacked more often, her counters will trigger more often, and she will also do gain energy faster to activate her ultimate, which also provides an additional damage multiplier for her counters. I think without her LC, Yunli would have a harder time triggering her counters and would be in danger of missing out the massive damage she can deal. In terms of March 7th, she is a flexible character who can be placed on any team, and her kit is actually quite solid. 
since we only get 3 more 7th Eidolons until the end of patch 2.4, we haven't been able to see what else March has to offer. So for now, she is in the second class, of course. There is a still chance that March 7th position will improve. And then what about Moza? To be honest, before both Moza and March 7th follow-up attack mechanics were active when their stack points reached the max of 7, this stack can only be collected under certain conditions, where March get points from her and Shifu's attacks, while Moza relies on ally attacks as long as he disappears from the field. However, Moza doesn't have the toughness reduction kit that March has, so I'd probably put Moza at one level below March 7th. But who knows, this position between Moza and March might change, especially when Feishao is released. But if you're looking at it from your own perspective, would you say Moza is better suited to be under March or more appropriate at higher level? We'd love to hear your thoughts. Next, we will talk about Jing Liu and Naomi Bitter Lune, the two golden characters who have ruled the standings since patch 1.x. Unfortunately, have to step down from their positions and move down a class. This is because these two characters started facing stiff competition during patch 2.x with the release of some strong follow-up attack, debuff, and super break teams. However, their position might be improved again if Hoyoverse releases new support characters for them. Many players still use Silver Wolf because the kit has proven to be quite effective in the strongest teams in current MOZ, namely the Akron team and the Doctor Ratio. Lynx has strengthened its position as the best free-to-play friendly sustain for Yunli. Also, Himeko and Asta can both be used as alternative super break teams if players don't have Firefly or One Mei. On top of that, Asta also plays a minor role on the damage over time Kafka or Black Swan team with Guin Ivan. And finally, we have the lowest ranked characters in this MOC. Can you tell me why Jade is on the bottom tier list? It's another MOC buff for follow-up attack. Jade does well in this MOC, but her follow-up attack specific kit means she often changes position in the MOC tier list. MOC buffs often change, and there's a chance they will be unfavorable to follow-up attack. So for now, Jade is in this lower position. As for Sampo, there's nothing special about his kit that makes players avoid using Sampo in MOC. And lastly, Yanqing. Yanqing hasn't done much since Aventurin came out. Plus, if I may say so, Yanqing's kit has been outmatched by all the damage dealers that have been released. It's so sad, of course. Next, we will look at Pure Vision, which is dominated by the follow-up attack team of Jade, Himeko, Hura, Robin, and Venturing. These characters work best together as a team. Himeko and Hura can boost each other's follow-up attack with support from Robin and Jade. Plus, Venturin provides additional shield and damage support. Ronmei also helps out with weakness breaks, which is still pretty important for follow-up attack teams. In addition to the top tier characters already mentioned, characters that can provide buffs to the team and also do AoE damage are still the ones to beat in this pure vision. It seems that Lingxia will also be a healer in th this top tier list. As I mentioned before, Lingxia's kit which provides healing, support, and even decent damage will be her ticket into this elite class. As for March 7th, she is a flexible and solid 4 star character but her kits are single target, which could be a weakness in pure fiction. For me personally, that March 7th's position could change at any time. The same goes for Moza. His weakness is also single target unit. On top of that, he won't be able to contribute any extra damage to the team because his skills will be unavailable during their use. This means we miss out on a lot of chance to beat the enemy in every wave in pure fiction. My personal view is that Moza and March 7th are better suited to the meta class. What do you think, guys? As for Jiaju, I think he can easily take the top spot thanks to his kit. He can easily give the Asian Rose debuff to the enemy and has a large coverage area, even if the damage might be better than Green Ivan. It looks like someone is already eyeing Green Ivan's seat. Yunli will likely be happy with this second place finish, given the kit issue I mentioned earlier. The kit isn't bad though, Yunli's kit is pretty good, actually. The coverage area is also pretty decent, unlike March 7th and Moza, which are very single target oriented. If players can get past the issue of no light con signature, Yunli might be able to make it to the top level. Meanwhile, the bottom level is made up for these characters. 
I'm still a little confused about which standings to put Fei Xiao in. The reason is that Fei Xiao's kit is solid but very single target. Pure Fiction is a battle that requires extensive cover damage. But yes, as I said earlier, maybe in the upcoming Pure Fiction, it will be advantageous for characters that can give single target weakness break quickly. So for that, I will place Fei Xiao in the positions equivalent to Hunt March 7th or in the meta tier. And finally, we have the end game Apocalyptic Shadow content. In this content, Akron, Firefly, Runmei, and Venturin were the top performers once again. Coming in at number 4 was Boot Hill, followed by Harmony main character and Galagher. These characters are the meta super breaks for the current patch, of course. Aventurin isn't technically a character on the Super Break team, but we have to admit that Aventurin's sustain is pretty solid, right? What about Fei Xiao, Ling Xia, and Muza? I think Fei Xiao should be included in these top standings as well. It's clear that Fei Xiao's kit is solid against bosses. As for Ling Xia, it's pretty clear she will be taking Gallagher's place. And I still think Moza and March 7th have a lot in common, and it seems like they will work well together in Fei Xiao and Aventurin's team. My view is that March 7th and Moza will join this elite group. But what do you think guys? I'd love to hear your opinions. As for the standings below this broken character class, there are no significant changes except for the addition of Yunli. As I said before, Yunli actually has a pretty good kit. But there are a few issues that players may face if Yunli doesn't use her LC signature and doesn't have support that can guarantee her the chance to be attacked by enemies more often. If you are not a fan of Yunli, don't fret. She will always come in second place. I'm confident that if you build Yunli correctly, she can also become one of the top performers. So don't be discouraged. Have faith in your building abilities and of course in Yunli's power. And of course, the other characters are forgotten and wasted. On top of the raw power they have, which is below that of Apex and Meta Class characters, these characters also have kits that lack shine. Some of them have experienced power creep. But remember, this tier list is like the ever-changing wheel of life. Characters who are in the top tier might be displaced later as mechanics or buffs are updated by endgame content. That's wrap on this video. Please leave your comments in the down below and don't forget to check out my other videos. Thanks for watching, stay safe, stay healthy, and see you in the next video.